So this segment here we're going to talk about is what in the world is AMSOIL doing saying that they have a multi-grade oil that is also considered a straight weight oil and what's the difference in those and how can you say such a thing? The best place to start on this is to define what it is to be a straight weight versus a multi-grade oil because what do those things really mean? And here's what they mean in general. A straight weight oil contains zero viscosity improvers. Aha, here's another term. What is a viscosity improver and what's that got to do with these two things? For years when oils were made, they're refined, you get whatever you get, that oil then is going to respond to temperature in a manner like we expect all liquids to. When it gets hot, it gets thin. When it gets cold, it gets thick. That's standard liquids. Now some do it faster, some do it less, and that would be how well they respond to temperature. For example, if you look at uh, water, we know that when water goes between, let's say, 35 degrees and uh, 200 degrees, that it'll change in its density by about 20-25%. Okay, that's how water responds to the change in temperature. So oil, which is a hydrocarbon product, remember, water is hydrogen and oxygen, oil is hydrogen and carbon. So again, it's a hydrogen-based type product. So what it's going to do? It's going to react in some way. It's going to thicken as it gets cold, and it's going to thin as it gets hot. Now, the manufacturers of oil decided that somehow they wanted to make it so that you didn't have to put in a 20 weight oil in November and then in May come back and put in a 40 weight oil because you were worried about your oil not flowing easy enough to start up your engine and drive in the winter and in the summer you were worried about your oil getting too hot and thinning down and not giving you protection so the the engineers and the chemists got together and said what can we do about this and what they did is they decided that if they could come up with something they could put in the oil that would cause the oil to be thin when it's cold so that it could pump easy and that when it started to get hot it would start to thicken so that it would maintain a thick enough viscosity to provide protection. So the objective was thin for cold startup, thick enough to provide protection when it was at full operating temperature and they got these things that they refer to as viscosity improvers, VI improvers. And what these things do, they, you can imagine them as being long strings, very thin, long strings when they are cold. And so they just flow through the system like little long strings doing nothing. But as you heat them up, they begin to coil up. And as they coil up, they begin to take up more space, effectively causing the oil to have a thicker consistency because of the coiled up viscosity improvers. Now, women could relate to this because it's almost like adding starch to gravy. You start with this thin stuff and you start adding the starch in and stirring it and pretty soon the gravy starts to thicken. Well just kind of consider the viscosity improvers are like starch but if you had gravy and you turned off the burner and came back a half hour later all the starch would have disappeared and it gone back into being a thin runny product and that would be how viscosity improver acts. It thickens under temperature and it thins out when it's cold. So the definition of a multi-grade oil, meaning that this oil can perform with varying viscosity under different conditions is an oil that contains viscosity improvers. That's what makes it a multi-grade oil. So the industry has defined that if the oil has viscosity improvers in it, it is a multi-grade oil. If the oil has no viscosity improvers in it, regardless of how it responds to temperature, it is a straight weight oil because there are no VI improvers in it. Now, here comes the unusual thing that occurs when you use a high grade synthetic oil. In a petroleum oil, what happens as you get colder in a petroleum oil the waxes in the oil crystallize and literally form crystals which make the oil thicker and thicker until the point at which the oil would literally be like a snow cone. 
He would have frozen into nothing but crystals. Okay. Now, what the petroleum industry does, and it's a good thing, is they use things called pore point depressants. What these things are is they prevent the wax from crystallizing, and therefore the oil will pour out at fairly cold temperatures, even though it would like to crystallize and stop the chemicals, prevent it from doing that down to a certain point. So these pore point depressants allow you to go lower. In a good grade synthetic oil, and believe it or not, it doesn't matter whether it's the hydrocrack version or whether it's the PAO version. The hydrocrack version, remember we said it's a pure base, all that wax is gone. Hydrocrack oils will go down pretty cold. They have pretty good cold pumping characteristics. A PAO oil, on the other hand, has no impurity in it whatsoever, and it will go all the way down to minus 40, 50, 60 degrees before it begins to run out of the ability to pour. So here's the thing. If I take an Amsoil oil that we call a 10W30, or even actually a 5W30, let's just say 10W30, an Amsoil 10W30, like our ATM 10W30 that we have, could actually qualify for that 10W30 rating without a single viscosity improver put in it. Because when I test it on the test that's required to pass the cold weather test to, for the 10W rating, it passes it. And when I tell it I want it to function as a 30 weight oil at 210 degrees, it passes it. And I haven't put anything in it. So I can virtually call that oil an SAE30 because there are no viscosity improvers in it whatsoever. Now I come along though with the 10W30, Amsoil does, and they put some VI improvers in it, really, I will tell you, quite honestly, so that it can get just whopping numbers that it does, because now they put the viscosity improvers in it, and they're high quality viscosity improvers, it can actually be formulated a little bit different, where it not only meets that 10W30 requirement, it blows through it way to the top, to 400 degrees or so, and it goes down to minus 70 degrees to pump. That's why they put the VI improvers in it. Now, if you want to see what is the base stock that could be called the 10W30 with no VI improvers, it's called ACD 30 weight oil. Our 30 weight oil that has an ACD designator. That is basically the 10W30 base stock with no VI improvers. And it still meets the 10W requirement and the test at 210. Let's talk about this for just a minute. When I do a winter rating test, I get myself a fine little cup of oil, I fill it up, it's got a, uh, like a paddle wheel in it, and underneath it it's got a very precision motor with a magnet that turns that little paddle wheel. And all I'm doing to get a 10W rating is I'm saying if this oil in the cup is minus 5 degrees, let's say for example, and I turn on this little motor and it, it's working hard as it can to squeeze that little paddle around in that thick cold oil, and I go over and read this precision milliamp meter, and it says it's drawing 10 milliamps to do that. Well, that's it, she qualifies, good. Now, I go to the high end at 210 degrees, take the same oil, heat it up 210 degrees. It has to pour through what's called a kinematic viscosity measurement test. It has to pour through an orifice. If it pours through in so many seconds, qualifies there. That's it. So. The SAE30 slash 10W30 AMSOIL oil, it's designated for us as ACD, passes the cold weather test I just described for the 10W rating, and it passes the kinematic viscosity test at 210. So it qualifies by its testing to meet the requirements of a multi-grade oil. But since it has no VI improvers in it, it also meets the definition of a straight weight oil. And that's why it can be called an SAE30 slash 10W30. That's the reason. Now, these viscosity improvers and why it's important to understand these viscosity improvers for a moment. I told you these things are long polymers and they wind up when they get hot. Well, what I've described to you is something that if we're not careful in the most extreme conditions could be broken into pieces. If it's broken into pieces, that's called shear back. And what it means is that it won't thicken. So one of the problems historically had been that in turbocharged engines, the turbocharger was shearing the viscosity improvers and the oils were just being wiping out engines because they wouldn't get more than about a 10 weight oil. 
the viscosity improvements have been improved and most oils wouldn't do that anyway at all today but the point is is that since my synthetic oil I just described could go from a 10W to a SAE 30 in this range, it could do this without any viscosity improvers, it would then make sense to you if I told you that we use an incredibly lower amount of viscosity improvers in synthetic oils to get the wide range that we say we operate in. And if that oil sheared back, if all the viscosity improvers sheared back in that 10W30 AMS oil motor oil, what would you have? You'd still have a 30 weight oil. <laughs> you wouldn't have a lower weight oil because that oil was meeting the requirement without any VI improver. So you can start with that base and build on it. Now, if you shear them all back in a petroleum oil, you'll have a very thin oil that won't protect anything. So the point is, uh, especially in high performance diesels now, real quick, high performance diesels or super uh, turbocharged gasoline engines, you just have to run synthetics in those engines. Not running a good high quality synthetic in those engines is just downright foolish because you've got a turbocharger in some cases turning 100,000 RPM. Not 10,000 but 100,000 RPM. And those things are expensive. They run very hot as much as 600 degrees and not running a high quality synthetic in a turbocharged vehicle could, if there was a law against it, it would be automobile abuse. It would be just like child abuse, but it'd be automobile abuse for running anything other than a high performance aesthetic in a turbocharged engine. It'd just be unacceptable. They'd have to write you a ticket for it every time they caught you. So anyway, another one of my humorous jokes. But anyway, that's it for the principle of multi-grade versus straight grade. And I'll just summarize it by saying that if you can make an oil that passes multi-grade without adding viscosity improvers, you're better off doing it. So if your oil only requires a little bit of VI improvement because the base stock is so well made that it will meet those wide ranges, then that's going to be a much better oil. And one, a quick thing on that though that I, I meant to say and didn't. There is a range in which you've got to understand on oil. When you hear that somebody's making a 5W50, let me caution you, that oil is not what you want. If you need an oil as thick as a 50, then buy a 1550 or a 2050. But when you get to that wide of a range, you've had to jack that oil with so much viscosity improvers that you are on the verge of reducing its lubricating quality because it is so jacked. Well, it's kind of like if I'm going to make um, if I'm going to make vegetable soup and I put in my vegetables, then I come along and dump five pounds of carrots in the soup. I don't have vegetable soup anymore. I got carrot soup, okay, with a few other vegetables in it. So what I'm saying is having to put so many viscosity improvers in it to get a range of a 5W50, you are beginning to interfere with the additive package ability to actually function as it's designed to. There's so many viscosity improvers in there to meet that wide of a range. About the widest range, which is a good comfortable range, is a 10W40. Outside of a 10W40, you're, you're exceeding the intent of the chemistry to do that and you're starting to have diminishing returns for what you're getting out of the oil. So just be careful with that. Uh, there's some of them out there. I mean, I've seen some cars that European, I think there's a Porsche or something that says that they want you to run a 5W50 uh, and that's in a turbocharged Porsche. Now, maybe there's a European spec that can make that oil where it'll last, but my suspicion is, is that oil has to be changed often because it's so full of viscosity improvers to get that range, it breaks down rather quickly.